Hey there. Hi. Good morning, as far as we're concerned. <laughs> uh, welcome to Spotlight on Home. Hey, so this episode, you know, we've been trying to walk you through like all the different things you really need to consider to start your school year, uh, you know, off on the right foot or even just start homeschooling in general. We have a lot of new people that are new to homeschooling that are taking that leap of faith and we're trying to come alongside you guys and help you out. So I thought what we would talk about today was discussing what a typical day in the life is going to look like. And let me just preface this with every day can look different. <laughs> They're not yes. always going to look the same. Life comes up. People get stomach bugs. Adult parents get sick. Um, you know, like there's life is going to happen. And kind of like the whole idea of homeschooling is it, it goes wherever you go. <laughs> so it's not like I, I really if, if the further away you can get from like trying to recreate school inside your home, the better. And I know that takes courage because it's a little scary, but um you can kind of do school wherever you need to be. So don't think like, oh my goodness, you know, I have sick parents or we're going through this thing right now and we're never going to learn. Like there's so many things you can do. Um, so what I want to talk to you today is well, scheduling your day. I would like to add to that, that, you know, as good as structure is and useful mm -hmm. as it is uh, and important as it is, as a homeschooler, you have a license very different. You're not boxed in between certain hours mm -hmm. where you're hard pressed. Uh, yeah. You can just adjust if necessary and that's a privilege that's a huge yeah. huge deal yeah one of the one of the benefits we found of homeschooling when we first started was his work schedule he would work a swing shift meaning he'd leave around one mm -hmm. or noon and then uh be home late at night like around midnight so the kids were little and when we first started out with our kids being school age they actually went to a christian school and um he would miss them pretty much the whole day he yeah. he would get up early and take them to school at 8 a.m but that would be the really the only time he'd see them until the next day when he'd drive right. them to school the next day so one of the major benefits for us for homeschooling was they'd actually get to have a relationship with their father mm -hmm. more than they may have uh, with with going to school so um don't think that like, we even have friends that the dad works nights and so they they their whole school day starts at like two in the afternoon because that's they give him enough time that he sleeps in the morning when he gets home from work and so by two in the afternoon i guess they're all night owls they'll they all kind of like start their day then and then they all do school together until maybe eight in the evening and he'll leave for work and then um they'll wrap up their day then like they're right. so their day and night is shifted so it just kind of whatever works and, for and the, the personality of your family. Even really. when I did swing shift uh, while we homeschooled, I was home for the best part of the family yeah. where, you know, the kids were not, were sick of the day and mm -hmm. the, sick of the wife and the wife was sort of sick of the kids yeah. and the shenanigans at least. Yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm there in the morning when everyone's sort of, as they would say, bright eyed and bushy tailed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was really actually quite good. Yeah. And I'm able to be a part, not not a huge part because I was still working, right. but I, I, I was at least familiar. They knew me. We were, we ate together. We, we did all the things and it was, yeah, it, was, uh, it, was nice. it was good. So when you're trying to schedule your day, I, I would say the first thing you want to do is really consider, okay, what is the personality of our family? Am I, do I take a long time to wake up in the morning? If so, you might not want to have school till eight o'clock or maybe later, you know, maybe 10 o'clock is your happy hour. Maybe, you know, for us, we have teenagers and they require more sleep. And so we found if we let, if we do school with the little guys, let the teenagers sleep and then get them up, um, by like nine, and then we all do our morning time together, then, you know, they get in some extra sleep, but I also don't have to compete uh, with all these kids. I can kind of stagger them, but also consider like, you know, my little guys wake up so early and they're ready to go. And that's really when the best time of day is for them. And for me, I'm a morning person. So I would rather get as much schoolwork done ahead of time as I can and then we can continue on with our day. So well, you're um, not schooling five kids at the same no, time, no, six I, kids. I, I you got you I got your most that. complicated ones, the young ones, yeah. when they're at their best. You're you're banging them mm -hmm. out first thing in the morning. You get one, two, maybe three subjects done. Yeah. Then as the older ones are rubbing the grog and the the goo out of their eyes, we're doing Bible verses together. We're doing the whole thing, and just by the time you're finished, they've they're they've eaten and this yeah. now they're ready to start. And they don't require 
quite the intensity. No, no, I can kind of guide them and right. then send them on their way, and they're right. happy to. Yeah, you kind of wind them up and yeah. send them, and it's a little bit easier that yeah. way. And then you can still manage young people mm -hmm. doing young things. Yeah. And I noticed too, like the little guys love to get their work done because then, then they can play. Right. Um, and then, you know, like to them, that's a huge reward. And so I also keep in mind too, when, as far as scheduling our day goes, um, you know, their limitations is definitely something you need to consider. So with my girls, we could just do, you know, let's do reading now. Okay, let's do math. Let's get history and science done. And then we can be done for the day. And I could just bang out one subject after the next with my boys being little. I have to break it up. They, they just um, don't have the capacity to sit and, and do school for that long of a time without a break. So we'll do math. And then it's like, okay, you go take a break and I'll do math with the younger guy. And then we'll swap. The mm -hmm. little guy can go run, run around, around. <laughs> and then I'll do reading with the one and, and then swap again. So I can stagger it and get stuff done and also keep in, in mind their limitations rather than making them sit there um, while I'm working with someone else but actually expecting them to, to continue work with their work. It, it just won't happen with their personality. So knowing that I can kind of be flexible. Mm -hmm. And not have too much of a, of a, of a concern. Um, the other point I wanted to make too was, you know, if you consider homeschool as a big umbrella, and and then think of a lot of, um, especially in in younger, in younger grades, a lot of learning is really them trying to replicate home inside of a classroom. So you have your kitchen area, you have your dress up play area, you have, you know, you have creative play, you have the tactile Play-Doh area, you, like you have these different areas where at home, you can have all of this naturally. You can take the kids with you to the grocer, to the bank, to, you know, like all on these little adventures to the vet or the pet store or, um, you know, and anywhere you really need to go, you, just yesterday we went and got apples from the apple orchard and they, we didn't pick them, um, but we just picked them up and we took them to the farmer's market and they got to see, you know, all the harvest and, and all of that can also fall under the umbrella of education. It doesn't always have to be in the seat learning that qualifies for, for um, an education. So well look at it this way if if you're going to send the child to school and and don't don't mistake that you know there are times when you may need to send a child to school but if we're going to do that why send them to a bad imitation of it if you're doing it mm. already and then it's already better and then you can actually invest more during those events uh, i i push very hard on talking to your kids we have a funny thing there's a mom answer and a dad answer mm -hmm. And I will often offer the dad answer until the kids are sick of hearing me talk. <laughs> and uh, sometimes they'll say, Dad, just give me the mom answer. And, and you know, okay, the sun is a big fireball. Uh, or I'll give you the dad answer. It's this, you know, compression of hydrogen gas and this and that and the other thing. And some of them want to hear it and some don't. And we can talk about apples and blossoms and, you know, pumpkins. It was yeah. all kinds of stuff. Why is this one so ugly? I said, oh, you know, it must have had an ugly mother and father. <laughs> and it did. It's these strange looking gourds with... Yeah with uh, bumps all over them, yeah. that's it. Uh, why do they have that? Well, I don't know, let's look it up. Yeah. And that is the difference. You're going to do the engagement, but you must follow through. Mm -hmm. um, yes, we all talk to our kids, but are you talking at them? Or are you talking with them? Have you taken them uh, by your side? Yeah, it's really about walking alongside of them and saying, hey, did you notice this? Did you notice that? What about this? So like yesterday when we were at the farmer's market, they had these little pumpkins for 99 cents. So we let our two-year-old take one and then the, the six-year-old and the, you know he was with us too. And so we let him pick out um, two or three for his other brothers that didn't come with us. Mm. Um, and we brought them home. And then this morning I was on the couch with my littlest guy. He was up first, it was like 6 a.m., it was still dark out. And I had decorated for fall yesterday too. So I pulled out all the books I have. My I have mm. a bin of fall books that comes out with my fall decorations. And I, I showed him his pumpkin. I reminded him that he got it and I asked him what color it was and he knew it was orange. And then um, I had all my books about pumpkins and, and because he had a tangible, a, a tangible pumpkin in his hand, and I'm showing him books on pumpkins. He was interested in it and let me read him two or three picture books just on pumpkins. So we were able to do that. Brings naturally. it to life. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just a natural opportunity 
um, to have quiet reading time with him, but it meant something to him because he actually had a pumpkin in his hand. And so the, you can just notice, and as you go along with your child through your homeschooling experience, these opportunities will come up and you'll recognize them as just natural opportunities for learning, and you'll be able to do that. Um, but really, it can happen naturally throughout the day. But it it can happen naturally, but you can still kind of plan it on purpose. Does that make sense? Yeah, like naturally yeah. on purpose? And I'll add to that. <laughs> Intentionally, I guess? I'll add to that. Because I had to do some enga- extra engagement with my 15-year-old, I stayed up a little later. Yeah. So I stayed in bed a little bit longer. And after she had that moment with him with the pumpkin and the book and everything, he come up to tell me all about it. Uh-huh. Pumpkin and, you know, to, to get that orange oh, word orange. yeah out of a two and a half <laughs> so year cute. old it was adorable but yeah. he did a great job and i said oh what the pumpkin yeah yesterday so we we talked we we lived life we studied it we relived it and then he expressed it back that's exactly what teaching is and that's so you education. already have that you're capable of yeah, that absolutely. it might take a little bit more of you to do but it, i know it's in you yeah intentionality i think yeah. is really what we're trying to say here so when you think about a schedule for your homeschool day. Think about cleaning, eating, playing, co-ops, board games. Um, you have your focus discipline studies with your, you know, your math, you, the, the core studies also, but field trips, play dates, all of those things contribute to an education. And so, you know, you don't want to live in a messy, crazy home that's chaotic. Right, so include cleaning into your your um, schedule. Someone can sweep after a meal. Someone can help set the table. Someone can help clear the table. Someone can put the dishes in the dishwasher. Like you can um, make it just a part of natural life. And and here's the thing, it's not it's not mean to do that. And I and I not and I'm not saying like you have to take advantage of your kids and make them your slaves. That's not what I mean at all. But these are just life skills that you're doing. But also like our daughter who's away at college right now, they're expected to help. You know, every every week there's a different. They rotate, and someone has to help cook breakfast. Someone else has to help with clearing off the tables, loading the dishwasher, like and sweeping the floors. And they have to mop when everything is done. That's part of their contribution to this program. So th- this is just life, you know. And so they're just doing life with you, right. and and you're training them, and you're they're learning how to be uh, uh, sufficient adults. Interesting thing. She, uh, it's a commercial environment and she's worked at camps and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And when we want to know how to clean a stain out of something or like that, well, we're, we look at the bottle, we say, well, maybe this sounds good. But guess what? She's c- coming home mm-hmm. and we're excited to find out because she got information from this organization. These are the right chemicals for this kind of thing, that kind of right. thing. My wife is very good at home management, but some of these things we, we just don't know, know because our parents yeah. didn't know. And no one valued it. School didn't value it. Uh, the companies we worked for in the past didn't value it. Yeah. It just wasn't part of it. So we are ignorant yeah. to some of these things. Yeah. Well, she's coming home, and we're, we're <laughs> like, actually excited. Tell me how to clean yeah, that tile. Just tell me what to buy and tell me how <laughs> yeah, to scrub it. And, yeah. Yeah, we're, you know, I am. Because that excited. is life. Right. Like I was, ta- I was taught how to you know, run a meeting and raise a company, not, not run a home. So it's mm-hmm. definitely been a learning curve right. for me um, over the past 20 years, certainly. Right. Um, so also when you schedule your day, um, when I said consider your children's capacity too, there's a big push, especially in like a Charlotte Mason philosophy, you know, have all your schoolwork done in the morning, the, the, the discipline studies, and then leave time in the afternoon for outdoor activity, nature exploration, um, letting them get outside, getting that fresh air, getting that vitamin D, getting that exercise. And so it is possible to to do your like if you're more a traditional person you know do the school work in the morning that requires sit you know sitting down and and um doing the more disciplined studies but then like save the afternoons for outside time and, and getting that exercise in and taking hikes and going on nature walks and trying to identify leaves or bugs or right. noticing different um different things that are around and if, if you're paying attention to the lessons earmark something you say well we're going to go outside later maybe we'll see mushrooms Mm -hmm. or maybe we'll see a certain bug or a type of bird or it's a a season and the birds are moving a certain way and then you can recall that with your child you remember in the lesson this morning they talked about that and then they can deliver some information back to you and then you can confirm it or expand or whatever and then um i did want to encourage you too like if you you know 
if you're coming out of a traditional school and you're thinking, well, we need to school from nine till three every day, and that seems like so much. I want to tell mm. you that really uh, studies have been done, and they show like 50% yeah. of a school day is really used up uh, – with arbitrary things, taking attendance, classroom management, um, you know, shuffling kids from one thing to the next. Like when you're at home, you can easily get school done in a few hours. Um, so I would not, uh, you know, force a child to sit there for that long, especially um, if you're able to get the work done sooner. You know, definitely be wary of, of curriculum that requires a lot of seat time it doesn't take that long to learn a concept and, and then move on from there. And depending on the, the schools, uh, if there's some are seven periods, some are eight period schools, right? it, mm. it varies. If you got seven of those periods and they're 30 or 40 minutes a piece, mm. let's say you had a really strict teacher and they got going in two minutes. So there's four minutes to five minutes lost you know, taking it to, what'd you say, taking attendance and yeah, you got just the class settling down and everybody kind of get... A lot of, of, of classroom management. It's turn a lot to of page, behavior you know, issues. A, that this are, eats that time. Yeah. So if you have a 30-minute class and you lose, let's say you have a real casual teacher, because those were the ones I, I loved, you know, you lost five <laughs> minutes on the front of class, you wound down for 10 to 5 minutes, then you're down to 20 right. or 15 minutes of class time, right. and the class can only go as fast as the slowest kid in the class. Right. So the lesson is actually... Same thing. It's really the about lesson 15, is actually minutes. fifteen minutes. Right. Um, the decision maker is going to be: Did you master it now? Do you need to hear it again? Can you apply it tomorrow, or do I have to wait for the, the standard level of class for everybody to catch up mm -hmm. and do it the same monotonous pace? Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's a fun thing about homeschooling too. You can teach to your child, not to the slowest child in the class. So maybe your child is the slowest child in the class. That's not a big deal. That's but, okay. But I was other... often. <laughs> the slowest child in classes, but I wasn't interested. Right. But also, if your child isn't the slowest child, you don't have to just drill into them boringness and then having them get in trouble for right. being bored because they're just being held back right. and not, and really um, not enjoying the, the, the education sure. and the learning. So sure. it can't, there's definitely... Um, you know, ways to do this in a, in a great way. So basically, when you when it comes to scheduling your day, consider, you know, what's going on in your family. Maybe uh, also consider this, like if your co-op is a little bit further away, if you go to a co-op, or maybe you have like a dentist appointment scheduled or doctor's appointments. I love to get audio, um, either audio stories or history stories that we can listen to. So our co-op is 30 minutes away. So on the way there and back every Friday, we would listen to a book on tape or we would listen to a history um, lesson in the car driving to and from. And that way, it was just a useful way to use time that normally wouldn't be used. Or when I have the kids and they have the dentist appointments, well, I'll bring a book to read. Either they can practice their reading and read to me, or I could be reading out loud to them, or I could say, here, you know, take this with you, because sometimes Chris will do the, the doctor's appointments mm -hmm. and stuff. Here, take this math fact sheet with you and do it while you're waiting. Or, um, you know, have them do this language arts workbook real quick, especially if there's three or four kids that have dentist appointments and they're gonna be there two hours. <laughs> but give them stuff to do so the whole day right. isn't wasted. Um, but there's always, um, opportunities to fit in education um, as you go. And actually, I find it a pretty good deal to do a f math fact sheet while you're at the dentist's office or the doctor's office because you're going to do, you're not always going to sit in a classroom. Like mm -hmm. being able to have your surroundings changed and be able to make that same thought, you're going to make it at the dentist, you're going to make it at the bank, you're going to make it at the store. That's real life. Mm -hmm. That's actually how it goes. Yeah, right, because you're never going to be in a completely silent room thinking in, as an adult. Like you're going to be on the go on the go living life trying to make decisions trying to focus trying to concentrate and to have that muscle of being being able to be flexible being able to focus on something in spite of whatever's happening is actually a really good skill to have so that's a good point all right so Thanks. i think that's it but if you want <laughs> if you want uh 10 tips to ha on how let me say what it is all right, let's see. Ten tips on how to begin homeschooling. Check <laughs> and, it out. <laughs> you can head over to Spotlight on Home, and you can click that and grab that PDF, and it gives you our ten tips with some links in it to get you um, 
thinking about homeschooling and how to start homeschooling and, and the website all that good is stuff. going online today. Oh yeah, we're actually working on that right um, now. By the time you hear this, yeah, it'll it's going to be a couple months or whatever, but uh, or a few weeks rather. Yeah. Um, but yes, we are. Yeah, we're we're making some progress and here, and we're excited. We're excited to ha help you. We're excited to hear from you, so that we know what you want. Because we we've been down all different roads, and we can just we can write on these. These are the papers here. The, these little legal pads, and we can fill these with things. But it, let us know what you want. Yeah. Oh, how yeah. we can help. There's there's things we know. Yeah. Tell and us. And it doesn't questions. even have to be homeschool related. It could be marriage. It could be oh, just yeah, relationships. kids and relationships and. Discipline, home in laws, friends, yeah. you know, whatever you want, you know. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're here happy to help, to help we're, you. We're, we're, it's good to know that you're not alone in any situation. Mm -hmm. So that's yep. what we're here for. We, we figured we had some experience, and uh, we're here to help. I'm happy. Absolutely. So thank you. Thanks for listening, guys. We'll Take talk care. to you next time. Bye bye. bye, -bye.